announcing that a sanction measure is coming, cutting 755 U.S. diplomats out of his country. North Korea, though, is uh, in our face with a new ballistic missile test seemingly every week, and Iran vowing to press ahead with its own missile program, which is kind of weird when you think about it because, well, this was something that we didn't think would happen once we signed an agreement to, to prevent them from getting anything nasty like that. The former Deputy Assistant Defense Secretary under uh, Bush 43, Peter Brooks. Peter, good to have you. What do you make of all these developments? Where, uh, I guess the issue of collusion, if that were indeed the case, and people have different you know, thoughts on that, then uh, we have funny ways of seeing it materialize here. What do you make of it all? Well, look, we're re reacting to problems that we didn't create. I mean, you talk about those three countries. I mean, Russia, we didn't cause Russia to invade Ukraine or, or take Crimea. Uh, we didn't force them to violate the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Agreement, which is something a lot of people aren't talking about. We do, we're not forcing them to, for their, to uh, undertake unprofessional airmanship against uh, our aircraft operating in international waters. Iran's got a nuclear program and a missile program. That those were going on well before uh, this administration was in place. We didn't we didn't cause that animus from Iran towards the United States. And the same with North Korea. These missile tests, uh, two in this this one month that are of intercontinental ballistic missile range, we didn't cause that that's and we're reacting to it with sanctions I mean it, it would be great if we could do it with diplomacy we don't really want to deal with it with hostilities or conflict so in the middle is are these sanctions and I think it's reasonable what Congress has put together to make it more difficult for these potential foes adversaries enemies however you want to characterize them from moving ahead with these programs that undermine our security now you know Peter if uh, Vladimir Putin was trying to influence the election and curry favor with the future President Trump it has backfired enormously then, right, given what's going on here? Sure. I mean, you know, look, the, the Obama administration tried the reset, which I'm fond of saying went from reset to regret. I mean, it, many administrations, the Bush administration reached out to Putin, but Putin has a goal, and that's to make Russia a major player. And it sees the United States and maybe China over time as the major obstacle to Russia being at the top of the international system. So, yeah, Russia's not looking for a fight, but it's looking for acquiescence in moving it to a position where it was during the Soviet Soviet Union. So repeated numbers of administrations have tried to improve relations with Russians. We're not looking for a bad relationship with Russia, but Russia is doing what it does, and we need to respond to it to protect our national interests. And then we have the China then blaming us and the North Koreans for that impasse, uh, not themselves. What did you make of that? Well, the same thing with China. China wants to pre be the preeminent power in the Pacific. It claims the entirety of the South China Sea as sovereign Chinese territory. Uh, they want us out of the out of the Western Pacific. They also want to replace us at the top of the international systems, just like just like the Russia does. And of course, the China look. Politics is the art of transferring blame, isn't it? And the Chinese are trying to blame us for what's going on in North Korea, for we should, as if we should forget about history in 1950 uh, when North Korea invaded South Korea and. Then then when China helped them, uh, which left us in the state where it have since 1953. So the Chinese, of course, are going to do this. They want us to make concessions. They don't want to make concessions. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're right in this matter. All right. I want to give the benefit of the doubt to the Chinese on this, just for the sake of argument here. Okay. What if Kim Jong-un is such a nut job that the Chinese can't control it? He's like, a, you know, a nuclear weapon himself, out of control, unable to rein in, uh, and, and China's kind of thrown up its hands. Hence, you hear this talk of fortifying and trying to protect that 800-plus-mile border between the two countries because yep. it's worried that something's going to blow. Well, in fairness, it is complex. You're, you're right about that. But if any country has influence in North Korea, it's China. They're the largest benefactor of, of food and fuel uh, to, North, to North Korea. They have an interest in stability on the Korean Peninsula. They don't want to see a civil war, refugee flows, uh, loose nukes. Uh, chemical weapons, all of these sort of things. So China does need to take responsibility here. Now, they don't want to because you're right. They, 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 are not, they don't have as much influence as they'd like. In fact, President Xi has not met with uh, uh, Kim, the North Korean leader, at all. So, you know, this is, this is the case, and they're very concerned about pushing North Korea in a certain direction that will be inimical to Chinese interests. But at the same, that's why the United States and Chinese interests don't necessarily match up on the Korean Peninsula, especially in North Korea, which makes this problem so very, very difficult. Yeah, wow. Peter, thank you. Thanks for having me. Peter Brooks.